it's, it's changed over the years there so much though. It's funny because I think, I probably same with you as well, but I've been around it so long from that, what, 94 till, no, I don't get it that much now, mm. but up to a few years, I'd see so many changing and I guess I've lived through a few eras mm. of the sport because I've been in it so and long. So what, so what was what was your best era? I so like, when, I like when, so you, when did you start getting good and what, what was the first competition you went into and won or came second or third or whatever? So I start, I guess the 2000s, the beginning of the 2000s were we sort of finished school. Yeah. But you, I mean, when I finished school, I didn't think I'd be do, I'd have gone into doing that as a job. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, oh, what should I do, graphic design? You know, uh, there were so many possibilities. Yeah. Um, and it was only when we, we flew to the States, I realised how, how much better I was than Americans. Because everyone's always like, oh, Americans Seriously? are the best. Yeah, I mean, from, from my age as yeah. well. And um, obviously I've done a few contests back here, the King of Concrete's at South Sea, maybe like done a, a bike show, which would have been so in Birmingham. So in your but, era, were yeah. um, Simon Tablon, was he so, your age si- No, Simon's older, so Simon's like in his 40s. So he wasn't riding when he was at... Not, Simon he, is what he was. He was still riding up until recently, wasn't he? And James Bestwick. They're still riding. I mean, I mean, only because Simon's got an injury right now, so but he'd be back... with them? I've competed against Simon. Well, I haven't beat them. Did you ever beat them? I'd only ever beat Simon if he would have crashed, or right. Beswick if he would have right. crashed, which never really happens. But they were, so, so you had that, yeah, so Simon Tabborn, Jamie Beswick, Dave Mirror, I don't know. Hoffman probably already kind of retired by the yeah. time I was kind of going to the States, but was around. But still, you never think, you look up to these guys, growing up, you're like, Dave Mirror. Exactly. And then before you know it, the more and more contests you're going to, you end up sitting on a ramp yeah. next to yeah. Dave, so you've gone from him being kind of like, I guess, your hero to thinking, mm. okay, here we go. You know, we... we was the gap quite big, though, between, you know, Dave Mira and yourself, or Dave Mira and it, Westwick? It, it was big. It was, that, that gap, the other guys, like, you know, the first one I did in, in the US, the first contest, was in uh, Denver. So I was at the Pepsi Centre, and I flew there on my own. Mm. And Were I you never... sponsored or not? I think I was, yeah, I was. I guess maybe by Fox and a, and a few others. But I sent myself there, did it all, and then got there. And that was the first one where you could kind of see where you was at with the other guys. And I got 14th, I think, at that, which was pretty good because all these guys you'd, you'd known. So you actually, you was, you was in the finals. You'd made finals of a, yeah. a top, U, at the time, top US contest. So that's pretty good. And, and that's, that's when, obviously, Vans, I've got to meet all them guys. And then I went on vans after that. What sponsored? So, sponsored by, by U, yeah, US. Yeah. Everything was US really for me. Yeah. So I wasn't really too fussed about. Yeah. The, and how, so how many years stuff. did you spend in America? 13, 14. 13, 13 years. 13, 14 years. Yeah. That's amazing, isn't it? So I spent a lot of time there. But yeah, I mean, them guys, yeah, before they become your friends. Yeah. It's strange because you don't, you know, then you don't look at them as. Uh, Dave always looked at as. Uh, and they've all Hoffman, stayed, but most of them have all stayed in the sport, haven't they? All, they're all linked to it in some way or not. 95% of the guys yeah. are still linked. Or you're going to yeah. see them somewhere where you yeah. go. There's only a few that are kind of like, right, yeah. I'm done. Like Jay Miron. Yeah. You know, he, he's got his own carpentry business and stuff like that now. So he does that, you know. Um, so you won't even see him. You know, have any, but, you know, has any of them got their own sort of bike companies? Obviously, Hoffman Bikes and did Hoff- anything else go into that kind of Hoffman, thing? Hoffman, Dave Mirror did Miraco. That's a good. I've got to think about. <laughs> Carlo had his own. Carlo had his what's own. His, what's his? Fly his bikes. proper proper, proper bikes. bikes. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a few people that started their own companies, you know. But then obviously Haro has always kind of been the biggest, exactly. and that's that's sort of did stayed you, with did us. You meet Bob Haro. A lot growing up or not? Not growing up, but in, in later years, yeah. I've met him, you know, you know, sort of sat down at dinners with him, talked with him and stuff, which is pretty cool. Yeah. You know, you, you never think you're going to meet them guys because so they're a lot Bob, older. Bob Harrow yeah. was sort of the legend when we were growing up. You know, he, he was the one who sort of he, did, did ET, didn't he? So he did I, ET, thought, yeah. I talked about that before, when I got into BMX through ET yeah. and Bob Harrow was one of the boys on the bikes who flew in the sky up with in, past the thing, yeah. 
I would say. Well, he, he kind of would have realistically started. He started it. He started freestyle, I guess. You know. Exactly. And every, and every magazine what came out had Bob Harrow, or if he was on GMTV for 30 seconds, you used to get up in the morning and you'd record it a big VHS tape <laughs> and just watch it and watch this. How did, what's his brake pads? What, what was on his bike? Yeah. His, how does he put his studs on his seat or his grip tape on his, you know, on his uh, frame? Mm. Same with You Bet, though, when they had that with, You Bet Carlo. show. Carlo was on it and e -Frame was on it. So for me, what, sitting at home, and see, you know, Carlo and yeah. do what you did the highest there. Oh, I did. What did I do? I've done a coup, two TV programs. Okay. I did a program called Splash. It was an ITV program in yeah. 1986 to about 1988. And it was like a kids program, sort of five o'clock in the afternoon. And it's a bit, little bit like Blue Peter. And um, they got me in and it was the year the Sinclair C5 was launched. So it was probably 1980. Oh. It was probably, probably before that, 1984. I think it was 1984. It was 1984. Yeah, I think that was, yeah. And um, oh, I was in the studio doing all these bloody hot bags and bunny hops and all this kind of stuff. So I did that, and then... That was the year I was born. Was it? Yeah. The year I was there, mate. And then I did a Doritos. Yeah. This is a quite a big one. <laughs> <laughs> this is big. I would love to find this. We're going to find it. We're fi it's got to be out. hunted high and low. We're called Doritos. See if they've got them. Because yeah. I would love to see it. <laughs> Very soon, some of you will notice a change in Doritos. cheese flavor whatever <laughs> definitely so it was done in l street studios so where they do all star wars and the set was a new york street scene but, you know massive huge hangers and it was like a, it was like a street scene of new york and i played like an american kid on a bmx riding through the streets of new yeah. york and there was taxis and there was actors and dancers and the, the effect was on the side of this block this uh, uh, block of apartments yeah. there was a picture of a Dorito with pan crisps and we all had to look up I was on my bike I had to do a skid like a 360 skid look up at this boom camera and the boom camera was coming down and I had to go you know, because yeah. this, this, there's a special effect. This, this old Doritos is going to change into a new pack, and that was it. It was three days of filming for that. I think I got paid about a grand. Okay. Did you find it hard doing the well without it actually happening? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, because sometimes that stuff's tough. You know, it's like there's nothing there, and you're like. Exactly. Yeah. Just, and, and there was there was like a, a like a horse and a, a policeman on a horse, and you know, it was just it was yeah. an experience. Yeah, it's cool, then. Yeah, that's really yeah. cool, actually. Doritos is... Doritos. That was, a, that was a huge, huge thing. Craig didn't want to do it. No, actually, Craig was in America at the time, so yep. he couldn't do it. So I, I did it instead. Did it. But, um, but I think Craig's done ski yogurts. Obviously, he did... What was that? What was that old BMX show years ago on TV? It was like... It's Channel 4. BMX Beat or something. BMX Beat, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, BMX Beat. And that was a that was a brilliant program. That wasn't yeah. it. Well, I've never seen it, but I've heard a lot about You've it. You've never seen it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ! Where do you live, mate? <laughs> no, I know. A lot of people have said about it, and they they're like, oh, "Why don't you bring it back?" I'm like, "What? What you?" Eddie sort of Fiola, Mike Dominguez, yeah, C Craig. You know, what was the one with the stumpy leg? Oh, Glenn, <laughs> what's his fucking name? Oh. What, is he American? American? Guy? No, an English guy. He was he was one of the pros in the in the eighties, and he, he was like he was very small. He had one leg short than the other. So you can imagine <laughs> when he used to pedal. It's like a bit awkward. <laughs> oh dear. Oh. Yeah, Glenn, and obviously of Neil Ruffles there as well. But they were the yeah. best years of my life, mate. Honestly. But I don't know when when you're in that, 
Yeah. Because you're free. But, but it, keep, it teaches you discipline. It does. It's te- and, and, if you, and if you can be the best on your bike, you yeah. can be the best at, at anything you put your mind to. Yeah. Because it's just it's the same as practice. And business is, is all about, you know, practicing and practicing and practicing and getting better and better and better. But because you're <laughs> obsessed, when you are obsessed with something, yeah. it's easier, isn't it? It is. It's not, it's not like work.